Welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is going to be looking primarily at rigging a character in Cinema 4D, not with the intention of using it within Cinema 4D, but really in conjunction with the Unity game engine. So if you're looking for um, a tutorial just on rigging a character, then there are lots of other tutorials out there that are probably better suited just for Cinema 4D. However, this is going to be looking really at getting across into Unity in the very best possible way. So as you can see I've got a character loaded up here on the screen. It's not in the classic T pose but that's okay. Um, it will po pose us some problems later on but that's good because we can explore some of those problems and look at how we can get around them. So first of all I just need to look up here at the character menu and if I click I can drag off the character menu and dock it into my interface over here on the right hand side. The tool that I need to use is the joint tool. So the very first time I use it, I need just to check down here in the options and check that root null is on and that my default mode is set to move. <clears throat> now what that does is it just means that I have to control click in order to make uh, the joints, but that's okay. Um, it's not too much of a hardship. So I'm gonna just switch over here to my side view and as I say, hold down the control key, click once and again twice about here and that's just going to start me off with the pelvis. Now as you can see I've got a root in here which is just a kind of grouped object and I'm just going to call my very first object here pelvis and my next one I'm going to rename lower spine. I'm going to reselect the pelvis and click on the joint tool again to bring up the options. This time I don't want root null, but I'm going to add another bone off here which is going to be for the left leg. So let's just move it where we can see it. And I'm just going to click here in order to draw directly down. So control key and click. And as you can see we've got our joint one here which is off the pelvis. Now it's worth saying at this stage that actually Unity can't read joints but it's a very easy way at getting um, bones inside a character rig so it's a great place for us to start and later on we'll convert it back into the traditional bones that uh, that Unity can read so it's worth mentioning that at this stage again I'm going to switch to the side view just because it makes it slightly easier for seeing the leg and I'm going to control click here at the knee one just around about the ankle and another one here for the foot and one more for the toes and that is that all done. So while I'm here I'm just going to rename these now while I remember. So left underscore thigh left underscore knee left underscore ankle left underscore foot and left underscore toes. Good. Now if I switch back to the main view I can see that that has worked pretty well but if it hadn't worked pretty well and it was slightly out then all I would need to do is change my default mode of my joint tool to move chain and if I was to say click here I could move and everything else move around but as it is I think that is, is fine the way we've got it there for this example. Next thing I need to do is just to click on the pelvis and once on the pelvis I'm just going to shift click down to the left toe so that all of that area there is selected and I'm just going to click on this align tool and it just means that all the joints are then aligned in the same direction which is actually pretty handy. And then I don't really want to recreate all of these again for the right hand side so if I click on left thigh here and click on my mirror tool I just need to change my plane to world YZ. My origin is going to be the parent, and the parent in this case is the pelvis so it's going to become a joint, um, a child of that pelvis. I'm going to replace my L my for left with R for right 
and if I've got that correct just click the mirror and in place it goes again just to make sure as that's a mirror that everything's at the right kind of um, alignment just select all of that it won't really affect this left side because that's already been done just click align again and it hasn't really done anything I don't think at this stage good okay so now as we've got that in position we can now move on and continue making the rest of the spine so by clicking on the spine here we can pick up where we left off back onto the joint tool uh, I'm going to switch to the side view again just because that makes it slightly easier to see what's going on and again control click just about the kind of lower neck area one more at the neck and then one more at the head and in actual fact I'm just going to move that head a little bit that way good and now we can come back to the main front view just to check that that's okay and it is but we obviously need to rename those so upper spine neck and head now upper spine is the place we want to be next because up here at the top of the spine we're going to want to bring off shoulders pretty similar to the way that we did down here so again just click on my joint tool make sure I've got my settings right I've not it's on move chain so just change that to move and I'm going to control click over here this time on the front view because it's a bit easier to see one more down by the wrist into the palm of the hand and finally down there in the fingers good and again we'll just rename those so L for left underscore shoulder left underscore elbow left underscore wrist left underscore hand and finally left underscore fingers so just as we did before with fingers selected we'll shift click on upper spine so that, that area is all selected up here I'm going to hit the align again just sorry just quickly flick on the screen there as it changed and with the left shoulder selected onto the mirror tool hopefully it's also the same as before and it is so that's great just hit the mirror tool this time and notice that it's not quite sitting inside the mesh and it's probably a good idea if it does so if I click on the right shoulder onto the joint tool again and move chain oops just undo that slightly there we are move it into position better than it was good and then as I did before just gonna select all of that up to the upper spine and hit the align tool again and as we can see it all snaps into position good okay well at this stage that is all the joints in position and if we were to go into our 3d view of perspective we can see they're all nicely in there so what we have to do now is convert this from joints into bones so making sure we've not got the root we hold down the pelvis just click on the pelvis and scroll down shift click the head so that everything in between becomes selected if we'd have got the the, uh, the root it wouldn't have worked if we got the mesh it wouldn't have worked and we go to character conversion convert to bones so we click that now it's important to notice that the bones are at a slightly different angle to the joints we don't actually need the joints so we'll collapse that up we won't delete them just yet but we'll just kind of hold them back there so I'm going to turn the visibility of those off and I'm going to grab this pelvis here so that I know it's the one I definitely want and drag it as a child of our skin mesh now as you can see some pieces of it appear to be missing and it looks at first a little bit dodgy like it's all gone a bit wrong but trust me it's fine 
Okay, so with this over here, it's probably a good idea at this stage just to save the work, so I'm going to just do file save as, and I'm just going to change the man here to um, man rig, and I'm just going to un do all of these just so that we can see them collapse them all. Now why there isn't a collapse all button in Cinema 4D is beyond me. There's this option up here in the objects to expand object group and when we click that it just goes down one and it's not really what we want to happen at all. So. We have to click away, and there should just be a way of undoing them all. But there we go. So with that all selected, now we're going to actually attach these to the mesh. And you may think they're attached already, but they're not. So what I've done is I've got the head connected here, and I'm going to hold down Shift, click on the skin mesh, so that the actual mesh and the bones are now selected together and in one very simple and easy way we're going to choose this bind button here and auto weight and what that does is it just selects areas of the mesh around each of the bones and weights it for us which is a bit of a relief to be honest because that normally would take quite a long time 